I never heard a human being, as I put it, with two arms and two legs and a mouth. Never heard anybody speak like that before. It was spellbinding. It was mesmerizing. And when he spoke, I saw in him an eloquence and a, a depth of spirituality uh, that uh, I needed to be around. He could probably get you to do anything, and I was prepared to join him. He was doing what I've been reading about, you know, and thinking about and talking about. What he conveyed to me was that it was terribly frightening and dangerous and terrible, but also that this was the most important thing a person could be doing. Two words that kept us going in the civil rights movement, those of us who were there, sacrifice and risk. What are you willing to sacrifice and what are you willing to risk? So this whole idea of the church being involved in stuff outside of the church, in the streets and community, because I thought church was, you know, within those four walls. But here he's talking about us taking action and from a spiritual base. And that was an obligation that we had even, you know, to try to help change the community. I was not always nonviolent, but we learned to accept that in doing demonstrations and things like that. So we grew into the nonviolent concept of how do we live like that. I didn't think I could, but I find myself doing just that. You get knocked down and you stand back up. You get knocked down and you stand back up, right? And you do that enough, and what you're talking about uh, begins to register, right? That you're not just talking. When he would, uh, when we decided to go to Birmingham, for instance, he said, you know, some of us are gonna die. He said, now I know they're after me, but don't worry, I can preach you into heaven. <laughs> and then he'd start saying all of the things that he knew were bad about you. Please, Jesus, give him, give him, take him in, take him in, forgive him. He is one that needs all the grace and mercy you got. <laughs> and, but he'd have us laughing at our own death. And that's the way he dealt with his fear and helped us to deal with our fear of death. The opposite of good is not evil. The opposite of good is a difference, indifference. And that was the center for him of the prophetic message, never to be indifferent to other people's suffering. I think the I have a dream. It's probably the greatest oration we've had in this country since the Gettysburg Address, really. He, standing in front of Lincoln, uh, he linked the movement back to Thomas Jefferson. That's what transformed a Southern black movement into a national integrated movement. That's what brought the churches in. That's what brought the labor unions in. It brought the liberal intellectuals in. Every, every American could identify with that I have a dream speech. I just walked up to him, took my left hand and grabbed his uh, right shoulder and arm, took my right hand, put it in his right hand and pulled him up, pulled myself up close to him. Tears coming down in my eyes a little bit and I said, Dr. King, when do you want me to go to Montgomery, Alabama? That's what I call the making of a disciple. And the more I, uh, followed his preachings, his teachings, the more I became committed to the fact that uh, this is where I would spend the rest of my life. My own children say, you're too old for this. You need to stop. Stay at home. I can't knit. I don't knit. I, I have to do this. I have to work with young people. I have to say to the world, we are basically nonviolent. Let's work on that. Let's build that. We're, we're not monsters. You know, why do we slay our prophets? Uh, that's the eternal question from the Bible, too. What does it say about us? He used to then talk about it. He said, you know, death is the ultimate democracy. 
everybody is going to die. <laughs> and you don't have anything to say about where you die, how you die. He said, the only choice you have is, what is it you give your life for? Then he told me he was going to see me in Washington. And of course, he was assassinated. But uh, what, about four years ago, I looked up on the mall, and there was Martin Luther King, 30 foot tall, on the mall. So when I looked at that statue, I said, yes, you did tell me you were coming. You just didn't say when. <laughs> OK. Yeah.